Hi, it's me again. And as I've said before on this channel, I love it when I'm checking the newspaper websites in the morning, when I stumble across a story about the BBC and the TV licence fee in a negative manner. It makes me really happy. I don't get out much, so things like that make me very happy indeed. And I've got this story today from The Express, so let's take a look at it and we'll have a bit of a chat about it as always, shall we? It's time to scrap the Brexit-hating BBC's licence fee, says Carol Malone. Last week, the BBC very generously announced a two-year freeze on a licence fee to help people through the cost of living crisis. Only it wasn't generous, was it? The corporation doesn't give two hoots about people's hardship. Yeah, I made a video about that last week on this channel. I'll put a link below. I'll try and remember. I always forget that, don't I? But, I mean, over a freeze of a couple of years is going to save, what, two, three, four, five quid over the five years for people? It's not a lot of money. What do they think? What do these MPs who have never had to struggle for money actually think that a fiver or two quid whatever is going to make a big difference to our cost of living? It's going to help us pay our gas bills. It's going to help us feed our kids and buy school uniforms and whatever. They really honestly think that that makes a big difference to our lives. It's, it's embarrassing for them, really, that they think like that. And it's insulting to us, isn't it? It's an insult. It's a bloody insult when they think, oh, a fiver is going to make all the difference to our life. Bugger off. It makes no difference at all. It's crazy. But 159 quid a year could make a lot of difference to a lot of people. It really, really could. Scrap the plumbing license fee. I'm betting there's a self-serving reason that it's got nothing to do with people's financial struggles. I reckon it's running scared after warnings from Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries who's not a big fan of the BBC or its licence fee. In fact, Ms Dorries recently questioned whether the BBC would still exist in 10 years and criticised its lack of working class diversity and perceived political bias. She also warned it would have to make changes before the government agreed to the next licence fee settlement in 2022. Well, there's a bit of an issue there because next year, 2022, they're not changing the licence fee settlement or changing the fees or thinking of scrapping it, anything like that. That's all going to come in 2027. That's when we can see big change. But I don't think this has got anything to do with Nadine Doris. Nadine Doris so far has just been all chat and no action. I think so far she's had one meeting with Tim Davey. So for someone who hates the BBC and he's putting pressure on it about the TV licence, she had one meeting with Tim. I'd have been in there once a week weren't you? Tell me what you're doing this week with the people's money. The 3.2 billion you get from TV licence fees, sit me down and talk to me about what you're doing with that money this week to make it stretch as far as possible to give people the best value possible for the money they're paying you. That's what I would be doing. I don't think she's done any of that. I don't think she's going to do any of that. I think she's all talk. So no one's fooled by this hollow freezing the fee gesture because it's about self-preservation. In fact, people are so hacked off with the beep that in 2020, 1.7 million of them ditched their TV licence fee, and the year before it was 1.5 million. That's a big bunch of very unhappy people. And I tell you what, out of those 1.7 million she claims cancelled their TV licence in 2020, I just hope a tiny percentage of that was because of me, because that would make everything I do on here, all the effort with the editing and everything, all worthwhile just to get just a small percentage of that down to us on this channel and sharing the videos and talking about it and bringing new people into the fight. Wouldn't that be wonderful to know? Make it all worthwhile, wouldn't it? That's why I do it. Add to that the fact it's bursting at the seams of fat cat executives and obscenely well-paid presenters who are living high on licence fee cash and it's clear people have had enough. God, she's talking a good game, isn't she? I love seeing stuff like this in the paper. You know, a few years ago, you didn't see a lot of this in the paper, but public opinion has shifted so much that the media's got to keep up with it. And uh, it's just great to see, isn't it? It means more people are coming into the fight. And this is where the change of the BBC is going to happen. People cancelling their licences. And the more people see it in the papers that it's okay to cancel your licence and the licence is just wrong and a con, the more people are going to do it. Bye-bye TV licence in 2027. It seems incredible that more than 100 employees at the Beeb earn more than a Prime Minister. Well, I don't think the Prime Minister's earning his own salary at the minute. Anyway, that's my personal opinion. Your opinion may vary. You're welcome to vary your opinion. The corporation gets nearly four billion a year from the licence fee, your money. It's actually 3.2 billion. And another two billion from commercial ventures. That's nearly six billion. One and a half of it goes on huge salaries and big pensions. What's left of that? 
goes on the programmes. Yeah, just take a look at the schedules. Just take a look at any BBC schedules for any day of the week and you'll see a little R after pretty much 90% of the shows on that day telling you it's a repeat. Where is the money going? It's ridiculous. Unlike independent TV stations, the BBC has never had to earn its own money, so it regularly throws multi-millions at projects that fail i.e. 100 million on its failed digital media project and an astonishing 90 million on a new EastEnders set which still looks ropey. Yeah, they didn't plan to spend 90 million on the EastEnders set. It went 27 million over budget. But even if you take that 27 million off, it's still a massive con. We've talked about it on this channel a few times, haven't we? And it's uh, like, at the same time they were building the EastEnders set, Coronation Street had a new set. And they did the same thing, the streets, the set, the sound stages, Everything for 10 million quid, which is expensive, but it sounds about right. It just sounds about right. 90 million for the same thing. And do you know why that costs 90 million? Because it wasn't their money. They didn't have to make that money. They know they're going to get more money next year from you with your £159 fees. But ITV, with their Coronation Street set, had to work for that money. They had to sell advertising. They had to do the work. So they got to look after the pennies. The BBC don't care about money. They just don't care. Now, I should probably read ahead a bit more first because she says the same thing here. Look, if an independent company blew that kind of money, it would be badly damaged, ruined even. But not the BBC. It just wipes its face and moves on knowing that next year there'll be another truckload of licence money coming its way. And she makes another fair point here. I wonder if she's watched any of my videos because we're talking quite similar grounds here, aren't we? I wonder if B bosses understand the harm that's been done by deciding to charge over 75s for their licences. I wonder if it knows that, for many, this act of unthinking greed was the final straw for people who saw it not coming from cuddly, caring Auntie Beeb, but from a heartless, uncaring corporation that didn't give a stuff about hard-up pensioners for whom TV was their only link to the outside world. Yeah, I haven't said it better myself on this channel, and I've said it a hundred times, that similar sentence. And it's true, they don't care. They don't care. They just don't care. They don't care about the over 75s. The people who are over 75s who should be getting a free one are the people that have paid TV licence fees and supported the BBC through their entire lives. And now, just shit on them. Just shit on them. Take away a little benefit they would have had to make them feel, you know, thanked for all their support they've given them over the years. And the BBC aren't making any shows now for anyone over the age of 40. They've said that publicly. They don't care anymore. And they're scrapping... BBC Four, which was what a lot of the Silver Tops watched, that's gone to bring back BBC Three for the 16 to 24 year olds who don't pay for a TV license or watch broadcast TV. It makes no sense, does it? So she goes on to finish her little article, and if you want to read the whole thing, I'll put a link below. I always put the link below to these articles in case you want to read them yourself, because I don't read the whole thing out. But she goes on to finish with, yes, the BBC should still exist, but it should no longer be publicly funded by the people it appears to despise and look down on. So yeah, I do have a sneaky feeling that Carol Malone there has been reading quite a lot of your comments you've been leaving on these videos on here and on all the other TV license videos on YouTube. I see many of you that comment on mine, comment and on other ones as well. And it's great. It gets the word out there. And it's the best way to spread the word and bring new people in is to send them the links to the videos and keep commenting and keep giving your advice in the comments on the videos as well. And I think Carol Malone has been skipping around YouTube looking at some of the stuff I've done and some of the comments you've written. And she's made a nice article about it and hopefully a lot of people will read that and they will see that they don't have to pay the TV license and it might put them off. At the minute I'm looking at it, there's 224 comments on there and many of them, well actually most of them, supporting the things that she's saying, which is blooming brilliant, isn't it? So what do you think about this? I think it's just great to see more and more stories about the TV licence and the negativity for the TV licence in the mainstream papers, because it reaches more people than little channels like me on YouTube could ever reach, doesn't it? Because people read the papers. More people read the papers than watch my pokey little YouTube channel. So it's, it's wonderful, and it brings more people into the fight, and it turns more people against the TV licence fee. Let me know what you think about it in the comments, and I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.